Okay, very cool. So real quick, I just wanted to go in and talk a little bit about what the Python Software Foundation is. So quick, quick show of hands. Minus the fact that the Python Software Foundation is a sponsor, who has heard of the Python Software Foundation? Okay, so at least there's like a general knowledge of like hearing about this thing. How many of you know what the Python Software Foundation is? <laughs> That's why I'm doing this. Okay, so if you do have any questions after the fact, um, again, there's links here. Uh, you can also email me at lorena at python.org if you have questions or there's specific projects you wanna do with the PSF. So if you go to python.org, you'll see on the navigation um, a link to PSF and it actually has like this mission statement, which you're like, what is this mission statement? So basically the PSF is the nonprofit. It's the foundation that sits behind the Python uh, programming language and the mission statement reads this, to promote, protect, advance the Python programming language. Um, I like this last part and this is the part I think is cool, to support and facilitate the growth of a diverse and international community. Uh, so really, really we are about building and maintaining the open source Python community and we have things to help us make that happen. So the PSF, for those of you who maybe have open source projects that you care about, or maybe you are running a, a conference and you're like, I wanna do something with the Python logo uh, and I wanna change it and I have questions if I can do that. So the PSF is actually the, the legal entity that owns the trademark, for example. So th when it comes to arbitration ar around the trademark or you are maybe doing something with your open source project that you wanna have it like housed under the PSF as, and have the PSF as a fiscal sponsor, we offer that kind of support for people who are writing Python projects. That's one of like the legal things. We do also have a lawyer that is on our on our leadership team. So if you go to again under the PSF listing, you'll see this like list of officers. This is a, a little boring, but you'll notice President Guido. There you go. <laughs> but um, all these folks uh, do something in some way, shape, or form. Um, so you'll notice that Van, he's a vice chair. He's actually our in-house lawyer. So if we ever have any things that are like, oh, there's a potential conflict with Python, or someone's doing something nasty and they're calling it Python, we have an in-house lawyer. If you have questions about open source stuff as it relates to Python, you can actually contact the PSF to get some get some advice from our from our counsel. So we do some of those things. Um, so beyond the officers, we also maintain a blog about the community. We have a team of bloggers who do things like this. If you want to do guest uh, content about that you want to share and write about cool stuff that's happening with Python around the world, you can email us at psf at python.org. You can also be a blogger. We're not currently hiring for that right now, but that is something we do on occasion. So we have we have lawyers, we have bloggers, and you're probably like, what in the world does a director do? So the board of directors, there's uh, about 13 of us. One thing that's really, really cool about this is you'll notice that part right there, board members come come from across five continents. Yes, we do have folks from Africa, Asia, Australia, Europe, and North America. So Marlene, for example, is from Zimbabwe, Katie is from Australia, Kushal is from India, and so on and so forth. So the board of directors are actually Pythonistas, just like y'all who use Python and love Python. So what does a board direct, uh, what does a director do as a, member of the board of directors. Well, we have monthly meetings, or actually bi-monthly meetings now, and we have two in-person meetings. That's probably not telling you much. Um, but when I, get, when I get asked the question, what do I have to do if I wanna be a director? Literally, you can be any person that uses Python. You register for the election that's in May, and every May, about a third of the directorate will be up for election, terms are three years. So what do you do as a director? Great question. Some of the things that we do, we now have like specific committees that are scoped to explicit responsibilities. So for example, fundraising, outreach, finance. So for example, uh, one of our directors, uh, Eric Holscher, who is the founder and creator of Write and Read the Docs, uh, he's very passionate about, well, beyond Write and Read the Docs, he was very passionate about making sure we had funds to do the overhaul on PyPI. If any of you listen to uh, some of the Python podcasts out there, I think this was Talk Python with me, they talked about the overhaul with PyPI. Where did that money come from? Well, one of our directors actually like went on a mission to try to find funding and actually got a Mozilla grant for the PyPI overhaul. So one of the things that the PSF does, we also maintain infrastructure. So not only do we maintain the, the trademark, but we also maintain any common infrastructure that's that supports Python. So as a director, if you have 
explicit things that you're very passionate about. Maybe you want to build a pool of money. Maybe you are very, very passionate about uh, growing Python in explicit communities. Maybe you want to do work um, with scientific computing. Basically, there's a lot of opportunity as a director. So it's basically amping up the kind of work you do in the open source community as a director, you are able then to kind of set some of that top level down, uh, yearly focus on what the PSF is gonna focus on. So one thing also to note, the board of directors is not, not um, we are not the core developers of Python, but you could be a core developer of Python. So it's not necessarily that uh, you, that the core development team is separate than the board of directors. So we do actually have two directors, um, Kushal and Tomas, who are actually core Python developers, but it is not a requirement if you want to be a part of the board of directors. So we also have a full-time, we have four full-time employees who do cool stuff, like I said, director of infrastructure. So Ernest, one of the dudes who, really one of two people, one of three people who did the PyPI overhaul minus the, uh, the, the PM. So Ernest, who is also PyCon USA co-chair, or rather chair, um, he's our director of infrastructure. If you are someone who's working on sponsorship or looking to maybe bring someone in as a sponsor for the Python Software Foundation, we have someone who oversees that, so on and so forth, and we have two part-time employees. So the PSF is the combination of our blogging team, the board of directors, the actual paid, the paid folks, and then, dun, 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 question of the moment, where can I get started by uh, getting involved in the Python Software Foundation? Great question. There's five ways you can start getting involved. Basically, anyone can be a basic member. We currently have approximately 9,800 basic members. The rest of the levels, you'll see the numbers enumerated there. Every level, but basically the fellows. The fellows are actually voted on and nominated on by a working group, which I will explain in a moment. But as a supporting member, you basically can sign up. It's 99 US dollars a year, I believe, and that gets you voting rights. So every level but basic gets you voting rights, if you're curious like what the distinction is. Uh, managing members and contributing members uh, contributing members. Um, for the former, it, if you do about five hours a month maintaining something in Python, so if you are maintaining, uh, let's say, PyPI, or if you're in a work group, that will be for managing, contributing. If you contribute to a Python open source project, about, again, five hours a month. If you run a user group, if you run a conference, contributing. No one's going to actually go and validate that you're doing about five hours every month. We will take you at your word, but you can go today and register. And because I have a lot of stickers, I have more stickers that says I'm a PSF member. So if you actually register, I will give you one of those. But the way you can start getting involved is by being a member. If you want to vote, every level minus basic has voting privileges. Um, that was actually something that was changed in 2014 because it previously had not been the case that everyone could be a member. Um, another thing the Python Software Foundation does, we like to celebrate our community. So if you know some really excellent Pythonistas who are doing really good work, you can nominate them for a community service award. This happens quarterly. So the last two folks who received this, um, Mariata and Alex, you can read the full resolution there. These are two folks that we are recognizing for their work. It does actually come with a prize. So if you know someone that you would like to nominate, you can email psf at python.org. We have two other ones as well at the Distinguished Service Award. Um, Mark Andre, who I think has, I don't even know how long he's been involved with Python, but he is behind EuroPython, EuroPython Society. For example, he just received that. And then there's another one that is in association with OzCon that is actually something that the PSF and Guido uh, award out. So we have also awards because we like to celebrate our community. And then lastly, the other way that you can get involved with the Python Software Foundation is if you want to get involved in a working group. The idea of a working group is it's f specifically focused to have authority to kind of arbitrate and lead a dialogue around something specific as it relates to Python. So for example, there's an infrastructure one or the example here, the code of conduct one. Code of conducts, you'll probably notice, are on the website. All, any event that's sponsored by the Python Software Foundation needs a code of conduct. So what does that mean? How does that get flushed out? What does it mean to have a code of conduct? That's something that we have a working group for. 
So if you want to get involved in a working group, you can go and check those out under the python.org forward slash PSF forward slash committees. Some committees are closed, some are open. You just kind of need to poke around. If you have any questions, you can email the listserv, which is how all of these committees work. Some of them might have, have fixed meetings, uh, but generally speaking, it's through listserv, and you can kind of just you know choose your own adventure, click around, see what you find. And if you actually see that there isn't a work group that exists for something you want to do, for example, a translations work group is something I'm writing the charter for right now, which is basically like if you go to python.org and all the doc and everything's in English, you can imagine that can be a barrier a barrier for entry for someone who's not an Eng who does not speak English or maybe for whom English is not a first language. So for example, a translations work group kind of extending there's a pep that talks about some of this, but extending that functionality and having a group of people working on that that's a work group that I'm going to start uh, working on to get created. Um, so then with our with the money, the pool of money then that the PSF has, there's some of it that we have to keep to make sure that PyCon USA runs every year. And if you're like, why do you need that pool of money? Well, one thing, that money then gets turned into the money that we use to, again, maintain Python infrastructure. And also, you'll notice that the pool of funding of where PSF money comes from, sponsors and member donations, um, the pale in comparison to where most of the money comes from, from for the PSF, which is primarily PyCon USA. So that's actually our biggest pool of funding. We're looking to diversify that, but that's where money comes in. And then what do we spend our money on? Salaries for the, for the folks who work for the PSF, for our infrastructure, and for grant proposals. So if you are running a Python workshop, if you are doing something with Python open source, if you're running a Python conference, et cetera, et cetera. We will give you money for that. You will need to write a grant, which I think this is one of the coolest things the Python Software Foundation does. Here's some examples of things that were recently funded. You can actually go onto the website to see the resolutions of all of these things that have been approved and their amount. All of this is public records, as are the board meetings themselves. All minutes are public and made available. Um, but for example, you'll see here, um, PyCon Sweden got money. <laughs> You'll also see this, this one's kind of cool, the ambassador program in East Africa. Folks who are actually going out and evangelizing on behalf of the Python open source community. We actually fund opportunities like that. There was a similar program that was run in Latin America um, led by actually the person who kind of made the skeleton of this talk, um, Manuel. Uh, so yes, yeah, we, we do things like that. And also we fund things like workshops. So you'll notice here this funding is for the, for the Latin American School of Tools for Political Analysis. So it doesn't need to be like a Python core development sprint or Python developer sprint. Granted, you could get money for that, but it could be that, hey, we're actually using Python in the thing that we're doing. So a lot of examples, if, there's, if you're using Python in some way, shape or form, you're looking to get some community support. This is a really cool thing the Python Software Foundation does. That will wrap it up for me. So if you need any resources, obviously check on the website, click in PSF, read the blog. There's a lot of documentation. There's a lot of stuff in there. Um, specifically as relating to last board meeting, there's a lot of interesting things that are coming out that are gonna be some initiatives coming from the PSF. Or you can always email PSF at python.org. We do actually have a pretty good Twitter presence. I think we could probably do better and meet you all where you're at. But please do come talk to me if you have any interest in maybe one day being a director, if there's work groups you wanna do, if there are things that you would just like to see the PSF take on. I'm here to literally understand what you all are doing and to try to empower you to do your thing. That's the PSF. Thanks, y'all.